God of all creation. You are indeed a living God, and you dwell among us, and we too are living beings. We give you thanks and praise that you have stirred our hearts today to gather together to say, O oh Lord, we believe you are a God of love, and we thank you for your forgiveness. Lord, may the words that are spoken today be the words you intend your listeners to hear and in hearing they share. We pray this in all things in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. I love this part of the scripture. It goes on and on and on, and, and, and as you're following along, it says, and the kingdom of heaven's like this, and the kingdom of heaven's like this. At the very end, he says, do you understand all of this? And what do the disciples say? They say, yes. So you just heard all of this. The kingdom of heaven's like this and this. Do you understand it? I want to take a break. They did understand it, but I'm thinking it happened in a different, maybe more teachable way. Let's think back 2,000 some years. What do you think it looked like having Jesus talk to them? What was the floor look like? Was it dirt and, and rocks? What were the people doing? Do you think there were a couple people that were sitting there listening and maybe there was even commotion of children or someone saying, hey, this is important, listen. Maybe Jesus gave them time to catch their breath between each time he said, the kingdom of heaven is like this. And what do you think it smelled like? What do you think they looked like? What colors do you see? Was it a rainy day or a day full of sunshine? Fast forward, you're hearing the, the living word of God today and Jesus is telling you what the kingdom of heaven is like and you're sitting in pews with a little bit of cushion. There's pretty nice air conditioning going on and it's a lovely day outside. We have spring colors on and we are just wondering what happens after worship today and we hear the sounds of children. And God speaks. And what we hear is what's called a parable. And he's very intentional. The word parable is in the reading. The word parable comes from this Greek word, parable. It's spelled a little differently, but the word actually means to compare. So now take this whole passage and say, Jesus says, this, I'm going to tell you, is a comparison. And I want you then to think. It's not a parable where we hear, this is right, this is wrong, and it's spelled out for us. When you hear a parable, you have to do some work. And together we're going to do a little work. Because this parable means it's an opportunity to experience what God wants us to know about God and about what the kingdom is all about. The word parable. Stay with it for a little bit. To compare. Now in this passage that we've been given in the gospel, there's lots of comparisons. Let's just stick with the first one. You might have heard it before. It is the parable of the mustard seed. If you've never heard it before, that's the story where Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. Tiny little seed. I took the time to look up information about mustard. So I want to share this with you because I think this is really important. First of all, did you know that the mustard seed is usually about one or two millimeters in diameter? Mustard plants are, and seeds are rich in calcium, potassium, vitamin C, vitamin A. Mustard is one of the oldest condiments that we have in our history of humankind. The American consumption of mustard is the greatest in all the world. I know what's on your tables now, right? The National Mustard Day and Festival are celebrated next Saturday. Mustard is consumed more than 700
hundred million pounds a year. Tiny little seed. That's all the positive things about this mustard seed. So when I was a little girl, I think we used this story in, to turn, learn about how little people can do mighty things. Or sometimes we were told that the little mustard seed, if you just let it grow, look what it can do. Is that what God has intended for us to hear today? Could be. But I garden, and I know many of you farm, and there is a lot of herbicide out there to kill off these mustard plants. Because even in the day of Jesus, the mustard plant is actually a weed. It is not some treasured plant. They made something yummy out of it, but it is really a weed that we try to pull out of our gardens, chop it down, the little seeds get left behind, and then we try and poison them, smash it, get rid of it, right? Because after we've had just about enough to make mustard out of, what do you do with the rest of it? Is that the comparison that God is asking us to deal with today? The mustard seed, tiny, yet always there. Is that the kingdom of God never leaving us, always with us, always being planted here, there, always with the smallest of, 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 of seeds saying, I've planted you and you will grow. Is the mustard seed like when we are angry with God and we say, God, you don't understand. Get out of here. We want to pull you out. We want to strike you down. We want to poison you. And God goes, you'll never get rid of me. I am with you always because I love you. That mustard seed that's all over the place, that infiltrates everything eventually we do and say, that mustard seed that becomes our faith. And in our faith, we believe that we are the children of God. And as the children of God, this heaven that is spoken about is ours. This mustard seed. Are you feeling your heart stirred today? Or would you really just like to pull that out and get rid of it? Or are you willing to help not only be the farmer who plants the seed, but someone who will water it, nurture, and let it grow. We have a world that is in anger right now. It's on the news 24-7 how angry our world is. But I invite some of us to know that it's not just anger that's across the world. We have anger in our own communities and we have anger in our own homes. And that is where the seed still remains. Because that's where there is hope. Hope that God's love, God's forgiveness is always present no matter what. The kingdom of God cannot be squelched. It cannot be poisoned or removed. But we are called to be inspired, to engage to not just passively watch the mustard plant try and grow on its own, but be a part of it. Let God dwelling in us and us with God. We watched that video of a bunch of, of kids that they knew they were going to have fun. What they didn't know was that God would speak to them. Unlike many of the mission trips we take, this one was in the beautiful Rocky Mountains. Some of our kids had never seen mountains before. I wish you could have been in the car with them that day when we drove up into the mountains. There were no cell phones except to take a picture. There was no music. There was just awe. And they knew it. They got it. God has made this for you. These 18 kids, and us four adults, we got a lot going on in our lives, too. A lot of doubt, a lot of worry, some brokenness that feels huge and, and really is raw right now. 
yet we saw the kingdom of God. We engaged and we're a part of it. We didn't stand back. No, when we entered worship, we were a part of it and gave our praise. God loves you. Not just in the moments where you go, look at me, I'm, I'm doing pretty good right now. God loves you always, especially in our doubt. We are called to nurture that mustard seed. We are called to invite God, and when we push God aside, ask for forgiveness, and then say again, thank you. I don't know about you, I don't know where you're at right now, but I even have my moments. I, I, I was at a parking lot last night after doing some shopping, and you know what? I was grumbling. This, 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 and I went through this whole list, and I stopped myself, and I said, if I'm willing to grumble and, and not give you any thanks and praise, how will anyone else see the kingdom of God? And I stopped, and I pulled my car over, and I cried out to God, no. No, I don't want that negative junk in my life. Lord, I, I ask for your forgiveness. And I ask you to just remind me that we have purpose. And I ask you to be patient with me to help figure it all out. That what we do today matters to the kingdom forever. We are called to engage. We are called to act. So today, I'm going to invite you to go out in this world and, and say, Lord, I'm going to put that grumbling aside and see your beauty. I'm going to put my junk aside and care for someone else. What would happen if we were people that when we heard that anger, we said, wait, do you know God loves you? And when someone was lost, we said, here, let me help you find direction. That is who we've been called to be. We are St. Paul. We are the church. God's gift is the kingdom where we are loved now and forever. Let us give our thanks and praise for it. Today, be a mustard seed, giving God glory in the tiniest way so that together we will be a place of peace and glorify God, now and always.